Hey, what's up, geeks? So I'm just chilling in my car right now, and uh, I'm contemplating if I should even go outside. It just started snowing, but we got some pretty heavy snow last night. And honestly, it's pretty windy. And I'm not sure how the mic's gonna come in with all that wind in the background. Now, last week, I was asked a very good question. I was asked, as a web developer, should you go into building mobile applications natively using Kotlin and using Swift, or should you go straight into React Native and build mobile applications that way? Basically, the answer is no, you shouldn't go native. You should learn React Native. And that's not because I'm teaching React Native. I'm trying to sell you courses. That's because it just makes sense. Now, I'm going to get into that in this video, so stay tuned. So, I'm going to try to record outside. It is kind of windy, so hopefully everything comes in smoothly. Now, if you're building an application with uh, Swift or even an application with uh, Java, because you've only been doing that for relatively a few months, you're not going to know the best practices around that language. When you've been building as a web developer for a period of time, and then you go into React Native, they're going to ask you the best practices around JavaScript. So basically, you need to know ES6. I think it's ECMAScript. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's ECMAScript, ECMAScript, something like that. You're going to know the best practices around that language. And when they test you on that, they're going to ask you about map, they're going to ask you about for each, they're going to ask you about filter. You may even have to do algorithms. You may have a coding exam, you're going to have to do an algorithm, and you're going to have to use some of those built-in functions. Also, your speed. Now, when you've already been building something on the web, and you go into mobile development, it's going to be a lot faster for you to actually start building mobile applications because you already have a clear understanding of how you're supposed to architect that application. Going from React to React Native isn't really that, that big of a deal because those web components are constructed the same way that those mobile components are constructed. Everything's pretty much the same other than like the div, the components names, you're not using divs, you're using views or you're just building, using things like that. You know, React Native has its own component name, so you'll have to get familiar with that. You'll have to get familiar with navigation, how that works. But pretty much everything else is the same from web to React Native. I actually had to sit down. I'm afraid to walk around right now because I don't want to slip on black ice. I'm actually sitting on a, a bench. All these benches have ice on it right now. So, you know, I'm not trying to die for a YouTube video. And another reason why you want to go from web development to React Native is because if you go straight into native uh, code when you're building up a mobile application, you're not only learning the language, you're also learning the framework. Now, why is that a big deal? So let's say you're, you've been, you built a few applications and then you've been building apps for about, I want to say a month or so. These companies are going to expect you not only to know that language, they want you to know the framework. So when you understand that framework, you're going to have to know how to debug. And as a web developer, we know that debugging occurs on the web. We use um, the inspector that basically allows us to console log our information. But if you're building an application on they use an Xcode or you use an Android Studio, you're going to have to learn how to use that framework to actually not only build the application with that language, but you're going to have to know how to navigate within that framework. You're going to have to know how to use that tool. And then you're getting interviewed by guys who've been coding using that tool for years. So they're going to have a very good idea of what you should know as a mobile developer using that tool. React Native, you're basically doing the same thing that you were doing on the web, except you're going to be building the application with a mobile simulator. So when you're, when you're debugging, you're going to be using the, uh, the console. You're going to be using the inspector to basically debug everything. You're going to use the console, the console log data, and then there's other portions of the web app that I'm pretty much, I'm not really familiar with, but there's other aspects of the web uh, when it comes to debugging that you can apply to React Native. So there are pros to actually building the application natively. The pro is that basically everything's built in. So all your navigation, all of your animations, anything that you could possibly need is going to come with that framework. Now, why is that a bad thing when it comes to React Native? That's a bad thing because with React Native, we have all these dependencies. It means that 
in order for your application to work properly or to even be uploaded within the Apple Store, the, the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, your mobile application that was built with React Native, all of those components have to meet the Google's and Apple standard. For example, I deployed an application to the Apple Store for um, test flight, I want to say a few months back, and I was using a library called PDF Export. Now, PDF Export hasn't been updated for the longest period of time. And PDF, because of that, PDF Export is using components that are no longer, that, that are basically deprecated on Xcode. So for me to actually deploy that app, and because I needed to, because I had that functionality, I needed that functionality, I had to go into the, I can't remember the exact name of the files, it's like the .f, I mean the .m, the .h file. I had to update those files and update those components. And it's not as easy as updating a component in React Native. It's a lot more complex, especially if you're uh, not really an OOP developer or you're just not familiar with working with that framework or that language in general. So that's my piece on why you should go from web development to React Native. And just to sum it up, is because you're already familiar with, with web development. You're familiar with the language JavaScript. You know how to debug, you know how to solve problems. And that's the biggest thing is being a software developer. Your ability to think on your own and to solve problems. And that's what's going to set you apart from other developers. If you're using a tool that you have no experience with, a language that you have no experience with, it's going to be a lot harder for you to debug. And companies don't always have time to wait on you to learn a language because they have sprints. They have um, milestones that they have to reach in a specific period of time. So you're only going to help yourself by using tools that you're most familiar with and then growing from there. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.